All right, so in today's video, I'm going to do something similar to yesterday. We're going to use Selenium and C Sharp to open up a web page, and I'm going to have it download all of the images from the projects. I'm going to create a new project. Let's make it a console app. Make this portfolio. Let's do downloader. Cool, that works. Um, for this, we're not going to need collections or, or text. Or, we'll need threading, but not tasks. Alright, so let's do using. We're going to need a way to actually access the web client, so let's use net, and then let's use, using, we're going to need selenium, obviously, which first I'm going to need to get that, solution explorer, and nuke packages, and let's get selenium. And install this. and the Chrome driver, version 79, currently. Okay, with those installed, we can do using openqa.selenium, as well as selenium.chrome. We all like Chrome. Okay. Um, just to give myself a little bit of time to actually move the window, I'm going to open up with a thread sleep. And let's just do 500 milliseconds. It's just the start of the program. It'll be all right. Um, Let's give ourselves an instance of the driver. So, new Chrome driver. Okay. And let's just do thread sleep when that opens up to give us a little bit of a. No, let's not do that actually yet. And then let's do driver dot navigate dot right, go to URL and we're going to pick a URL in this case I'm going to use my portfolio which is hosted on ArtStation so let's just copy and paste that Then, when that loads, we're going to give it the thread sleep while it loads. There are better ways to do that, to wait on the web page, but seeing as I have a very, very fast connection, uh, it should be fine. So, let's, um, let's create a variable called projects. And this is going to do the exact same thing it did before. We're going to do driver dot find elements. We want to find elements, not element. And we're going to do uh, by class name. If I would spell that right, it'd be great. By class name. And the class name, uh, if we bring. the web page up over here. We can see that each one of these 
is an album grid item. So we'll just copy that. Move that back over here for now. We'll um, insert that. Give ourselves a some little a little bit of debugging info. Uh, that right line. Well, let's just do number. Uh, let's just do number of projects found. For Aldridge, and then we can put in the project's number. Do projects dot count, and that'll give us the number of uh, projects on the page. Okay. Now, in order to actually do something with those we're going to need to use a for loop we could also use a for each loop i suppose but uh, in this case we're going to use a for loop okay and we're going to make the length be um, projects count to give us a range for the for loop so let's do projects equals driver. Basically, we're doing the exact same thing we did up here. We can just copy and paste this whole line. The reason we're redefining projects here is because if we don't, every time we go through the loop and try to get the next element, it'll be invalid. So we're going to redefine projects here. And then we're going to do project. And we're going to get the first in the index. So we're going to just use i inside of our for loop there. And then we're going to just click that item. So then we can load into that page. And then let's give it some time to wait on that page to load. Let's give it, um, let's give it one second. What I could do now is do driver navigate back. And we can test this. and you'll see that it should work. So let's start it. Open up the web page. We'll click on the first item. There it is. We'll navigate back, click on the second item, go back, click on the third item, go back, on and on and on. So now we're gonna wanna get the images on the page itself. So we're gonna create a new variable called images. And it's going to be an array. I hope I spell driver right. I'm going to find elements. And we're going to do by tag name. Let's do the tag is IMG. So we're searching for the actual tag. So if we bring up the web page here. We'll see when I click on one of these, if we inspect one of these images, we'll see that the class is IMG fluid constrained. We could use class, but the problem there is there's a space in between and Selenium doesn't really like that. So we'll do by tag name and do image. Now we can do a right line. Let's do an empty right line to give us a space inside of our console for readability. Um, now we're gonna we're gonna find out how many images we found inside of that pro inside of that particular project. So now let's do number of images found in project. 
to give it a uh, little bit of a space. Okay. And then we're just going to do a plus, and then we're just going to input images dot count. And that should give us the number of images found inside of this particular project. Okay. Another space for readability. Let's do another for loop. And this time we're going to need to change these eyes because otherwise they'll be the same as the ones up there. Let's just make it an X. And length, we're going to make it images dot count to give us a just to give us a uh, just to get us a range so then we're gonna make a new variable call it image URL and this is going to be images needs to be one singular item of course so we're gonna get the location in the array that is images which is x in this case um, and then we're going to get the attributes of that all right and the attribute we're looking for is called source or src okay let's give ourselves a new variable make an image name we'll do basically the same thing but this time we're going to get the alt attribute so we can just copy and paste this give us the alt. And if you want to see what we're doing here, if we inspect one of these, we can view that its source is this URL right here, and the alt is the name of the file itself. So now, if we do another console right line, we can say what file we're downloading for debugging purposes or just for nice readability. I like to know what my programs are doing. Okay, and then we can just put in the file name that we just found right there, which is image name. And that should give us a nice little readout of the images we find inside of each project as they're downloaded. So now we're gonna use a web client and let's just name it downloader. And we're going to do new web client. So then we can do downloader dot download file. And we can point it to a file. This requires two inputs, just an address of the actual file we're trying to download and the string name where we're pointing it to download to. So we're going to download the file image URL, which we defined up there. Put a comma in there, and then we can uh, give it a path. I'm going to download everything into a folder in my S drive. Let's create a new folder. Let's name this um, image downloads. That works. Okay. So now if we just copy the address, we can paste that in here. Make sure we have the right escape sequence and we can input the image name right inside here to use it as a file name essentially. And then we got a tack on the file name to make sure we actually can open it in Explorer when we get done. And then we should let our thread sleep for just a little bit to make sure it has time to go back to the previous page. Let's make it 250 milliseconds. And then, if we do everything correct, this should work perfectly fine. Let's pull this folder over and let's start this and see how we go. Opening up the web page, loading the file, and there you see it's starting to download the files, and they're in the folder. And it'll go back and download all the new ones, back and download, back and download. And doing this, I should be able to download every single file inside of my portfolio. Just a nifty little way to do it a lot faster than manually clicking on the buttons. And much faster. 
we maybe could make this a little faster if we used a waiting system that waited for items on the page to load fully instead of, uh, you know, full thread sleeps. But it, it should work all the same. Just a little slower this way. But it works. I think that's all for today. If you'd like more videos like this on programming and game design, all around software developer life stuff, consider subscribing and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.